Hi, everybody. We're having our next episode of uh, BVS Film Productions Final Cuts. And today we have a special guest, Peter Cimarroni. He is a serial entrepreneur. He's a successful podcaster and owner of Palladium Edge. Um, and he's going to tell you all about that. So, uh, Peter, take it away. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks, Dan. And, you know, Dan, I really love what you're doing. And I love the way you're doing it. So the quality of it is is first class. And that's what I love being associated with. And that's what Palladium Edge is. It's a best practices company. So what, like, what we do is we go in and triage companies, kind of do a deep dive, find out what's right with them, what's not so right with them, where do they want to be and why and how fast. And that could be any of these different types of best practices. Everything from top line growth, which is marketing and advertising and selling, right, to line item efficiencies where we can actually show people how to monetize their accounts payable, reduce all types of costs from insurance to electricity, et cetera, et cetera, to EBITDA growth. So EBITDA is earnings before tax, interest, depreciation, et cetera. Yeah. And that's really where valuation is for any company. We also help them if they look, they're looking to raise capital, we have access to people that do that. We don't raise capital per se, but we have access to. And also too for companies that if they want to acquire companies, you know, inorganic growth through acquisition. We show them how culture is very important. So you don't want to buy something that's a square peg in a round hole. And then lastly, that revenue event, when they want to be sold, we get them the best valuation. And that's where EBITDA is. Ah, very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay, so how did you get started in this business? I mean, who, yeah. who is Peter Cimarroni? I hear you, I hear you. Well, you know, back <clears throat> in the day, I, I, graduated with a master's from John Carroll University in history. What are you going to do with that? So I went to law school. I didn't like it. So I came out and started selling airtime for Magic Radio, Larry Robinson. Okay. Oh, really? The brilliance of Larry Robinson, right? right? I right. mean, I, yeah. you kid, the diamond man, yeah. right? And so we sold for Magic. And I really got an, an, a, you know, a baptism of fire, uh, a Harvard MBA of the street, if you will. <laughs> right. And before we knew it, we were opening up our first agency. And we did real well with that. We sold it and then um, went to work for the company that bought me. Mm -hmm. Came back, went to work for a large property and casualty insurance agency as their basically their acti acting president. And during that time, invented a product called Cough Pops, Cough Drop on a Stick. That's right. Yes. You told me about that. Yes, yeah. yes. And we, it was one of only three consumer products mm -hmm. in the entire decade of the 90s to come out of Cleveland, Ohio. One was the Spin Toothbrush. The other was Gojo, Purell, and us. Not bad company. And wow. we ended up being an international brand. We were in Canada, all 50 states, United States, Mexico, and the Middle East. We sold that in 2006 and did okay. And did I okay. wondered who made those things. <laughs> you know, I you're looking at them. Commercials. Yeah, you're looking at them. pretty cool. Yeah. So, and how we got that was one Christmas, I think it was 97, I was over uh, right after Christmas, and I, I was with my sister and my brother-in-law, and I was sitting at the Christmas, you know, the, the table and he was holding a lozenge in his uh, daughter's mouth and I said why are you doing that and my my sister pipes up and goes that's my idea I go what do you mean uh, it's your idea she well I don't want her to choke and he's a doctor right he was an OBGYN and he goes yeah I don't want her to aspirate I go there's got to be a better idea and in unison they both say what well, let's put it on a stick and that was it and I went to run with it because they're a doctor and a housewife, you know, God bless her. She, mm -hmm. she, she actually is great in her own right as a business person, but she was raising kids. Yeah. And so I was that businessman that went out. And I'll tell you what, if somebody would have told me, Dan, what I have to go through, blood, sweat, and tears, I would never have done it. But I have, okay. I have that in my back pocket. We did it. And we were on the cover of all the major newspapers, wow. and magazines. And prior to the internet, we were actually selling on the internet, the nation part of the internet, 90, 98, 99, 2000. We had a website. We were selling on the website. Wow. So it was pretty cool. And then that led me to creating essentially Palladium 20 years later, you know, through Razor, Grappler Group Razor, the etymology of, of Palladium. And what we did was we took those best practices, those lessons we learned, those mistakes we made, mm. and we brought them to the business world. So we really can tell people what not to do, which is as important as what to do. Yeah. Saves a lot of heartache, a lot of capital, and a lot of uh, a lot of time and aggravation. Yeah, right. right, wow. Well, as you know, this podcast is about video and uh, sure. how video played a role in marketing. And maybe yes. you can kind of share about that a little bit too. Yeah. You know? Well, if you hit our site, you'll see one of the biggest award-winning uh, campaigns we did was for Metro Lexus. Mm -hmm. 
um, back 20 years ago. So, and your video, obviously, with Criterion right. Tool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. And so uh, we, we are strong believers in videos for branding, messaging, and internal communication. Right. 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 Yeah. So yeah. those three are, you know, those three are the crown jewels mm -hmm. of video uh, of use, if you will. And then, of course, now with everything in video snippets and contents from YouTube to oh, TikTok yeah. to Instagram, um, we are doing that and huge believers in that. We do that in our podcast. Wow. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Leads me to the next step. Yeah. Um, so Blood Time Podcast. Yes. Yes. Going yes. on four years now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. So. Tell us about that and the success that you're having with that's fantastic from what I hear. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we just released our 93rd episode, our longest episode ever. It was a tribute to Fallen Hero, Jeff Tolan, one of my guys oh, that I coached. Wow. He just recently passed away at a tender age of 59. Oh, that's so it's a brutal. It's a it's a brutal hole in all of our collective wrestling family, the Beatrud and wrestling family. And uh, in that tribute, uh, we talk deeply about why the sport is so doggone important to not yeah. only the athlete, but when the athlete is inspired by that coach or by that, you know, drill partner or by that opponent and yeah. what they do with that transformation in the real world. And so, that's what blood time is. Okay. So maybe we can tell people about, you know, your wrestling background. So yeah. Can okay. Know where that yeah. Ties in. Well, I, I started wrestling in 1971, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I started coaching in 1978. So okay. I wrestled for Beachwood. I wrestled for University of Dayton. I transferred to Carroll, blew out my knee, mm. and I couldn't rehab it. So I went to coaching right away and I coached my alma mater, Beachwood, as the assistant coach. Okay. And then so. was the first GA at John Carroll. So I had wow. both my alma maters under my belt before I was 25 years old, wow. which was really cool. And coached wow. state and national champs yeah. and all that. And then became the head coach and revived the program at Beachwood. It was down to one wrestler in 87, mm -hmm. K through 12. Wow. K through 12. And within four years or seven years, we were fourth in the state. Wow. Yeah. And then I did that a second time yeah. in 2014 when they were down to six kids, K through 12. Mm -hmm. Built that back up to 100 kids, turned it over to Jimmy Greenwood, who is beautiful. He's the head coach now and has been there for, I think, six years. Mm -hmm. And then I heard that the Sharin Falls program was ready to be disbanded. They were down to five kids, K through 12. I took that over in 18. Mm -hmm. I never thought I'd coach again. I thought I was done. Done, was done, it. done. Right. Yeah. And then, um, Dan, we're back up to 120 kids, K through 12. And we had a historic year last year with Sam Partain, was our first Division II district champion in the history of the school. Wow. We had other Division three champs, mm -hmm. and he was the first uh, state place winner in the history of the school, Division wow. II. So it was pretty cool to do that, yeah. right? And we're in great shape right now. And uh, I think this may be my swan song. So that's it. Yeah, I've got <laughs> awesome. I've got everybody in good good health. Yeah. And yeah. I've I've pretty much uh, <laughs> documentary. I, I do. Needs. I do. And the other thing we started was Wrestlers and Business Network. Uh -huh. uh, back in 2009, uh, one of my athletes, Aaron Grossman, who's uh -huh. the CEO of Alliance Staffing Solutions, came to me with this idea. Yeah. Why don't we get wrestlers together to create a a, a business powerhouse, a, a, a political powerhouse, you know, just a, a power, a civic powerhouse. Yeah. And they're 55,000 members strong. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So he's done a phenomenal job with that. And I was one of the founding members. Wow. Yep. That's cool. So yeah. going back to the podcast, sure. you seem to get some really big players on your podcast. We do okay. So how well, we you, had you on Undeniable, well, my man. Yeah, right, bigger than me. Uh, you I hear you. Yeah, but look do. what you're doing with Tom Hopkins and uh, stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, but you know, I mean, I've seen just some of them. You had, I mean, that uh, IMG and all yep. the different ones. How, how do you get those guys on your your podcast? Calls. Just phone calls. Calls. It's yeah. old school. Um, you know, uh, obviously to, you know, LinkedIn, my LinkedIn is extremely robust. Yeah. We're almost at 20,000. We're almost at the limit yeah, at 20,000. Yeah, yeah. oh. I mean, I just did Robert Marks, who was one of the top ISP providers in 2000, 2001, oh. killed, killed it and just recently got inducted into my high school hall of fame. And I'm, a, I'm a member. So I was there and I said, Robert, I want to talk to you. So I interviewed him and he's, his, this is the picture of he and I. Mm -hmm. It's got like 1,600 impressions. <laughs> it's ridiculous, isn't yeah, it? I mean, yeah, two yeah. dopey guys standing there, you know, smiling and put a peace sign up and we yeah, got six. Yeah. So that's the kind of stuff that's happening. 
And the undeniable is the business side of that same mentality of that inspirational spark. Which is the new podcast that you're Yes, it's on. now, mm-hmm. actually we're in our second season. Wow. And we're also okay. on terrestrial radio uh, on w, um, on Salem Broadcasting. Wow, yeah. fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I think people don't understand that, uh, you know, higher ups are, uh, they're accessible. Sure. They are. Yeah. Most people look at it as like, oh man, I'm really afraid to talk to them or do anything. But in reality, they are accessible. If you yeah. have a good... Um, proposition yeah. you know a good message that you want to give to them yeah you know? it's interesting too and I, did, I didn't realize the cachet that i have in the marketplace but i'm called coach all the time and mm-hmm. kevin goodman is one of those guys you know the guys who who's the ceo of blue bridge network yeah, so, you, know, yeah, yeah. you know and he's like coach i'm honored to be on your on your podcast i'm like dude i'm honored to have you on you know what wow. i mean and you don't realize that you have that cachet right That's and right. so um and, and so humbly i say okay i'll use that Mm-hmm. And so, but I have no fear. I've never had a fear of calling anybody. I mean, I've, right. I sat. Well, you came from the old school like I did. You know, yeah, you got a phone book, a, day, a card book, table, let's it. go, right? You, exactly. know what I mean? you know what I mean? Exactly. And I, I, what what really was my crowning achievement, realized that I didn't have any fear, was when we had cough pops. Mm-hmm. And um, we wanted to have a revenue event earlier than 2006. Yeah. So I reached out because I heard that he was acquiring other companies in the space mm-hmm. was uh, Joe Viviano, who was the, at the time, this is I think the late 90s, yeah. was the CEO of, of Hershey's. Oh, and so okay. on my call, he says, come on in young man. You know, he was probably my age yeah. at the time and I was, I don't know, probably late 30s. And I'm sitting in his office in Hershey PA and at the desk, Dan, above him is a 10 foot portrait of Milton Hershey. Oh, wow, yeah. So he asked me, he goes, so how many uh, cough pops have you done, you know, this year? I said, and br- proudly, I said, you know, we're, we're up to, you know, 8 million a month, wow. which is good, but it's not great. Yeah. He goes, he goes, dude, I do 32 million kisses a day. And that was just one of his lines, you know, he had, her, yeah. he had Reese's, he had, uh, you know, Almond Joy, he had, yeah, Mal- yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, he had yeah, all yeah, these lines, but he was buying it. Ludens and Smith Brothers and all these others. Right. And so um, we had met with the Coldies people too, but I, 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 I realized that I can get into any door at that moment. Yeah, I thought they, I thought Coley's had something like that too. They were starting to come into that, but I don't think it ever got. Familiar. No, no, the, there was yeah. a com- competitor. We ended up buying the competitor, and then really? you know, yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. It was an interesting dynamic, and you meet some really creepy people too. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, a really creep trying to steal your shit. You know, it's it's uh, not good, uh, not good. So, but hey, you learn, you live and learn. Right. You you, you grow right. that alligator skin, and you move on. You know. That's life. Right. That's what you do. Right. So you have this new thing. Yes, we do. So I know you brought some today, which is I great. I did, yes. So we're yes. all going to eat it. I made it this morning, brother. Day. Yeah. Did you miss it? Yeah. Yeah. I washed right. my hands real good, nice. you know? Yeah. Nice. So you're you're good. You're in good shape. Awesome. Yeah. So tell us about this new venture of yours, uh, you know, the, this guacamole dip. It's yes. Basically yes. GG's. GG's. GG's for gourmet yeah. guac, but it's just the two names. Mm-hmm. I mean, the two initials. And uh, the uh, holding company is called Avocado Goodness Corporation. Avocado Goodness. Goodness Corporation, okay. yes. And so what happened was about five years ago, I was uh, starting to date uh, seriously my now wife. Mm-hmm. And we do these Sunday fun days, right? And mm-hmm. so one day we went to Paladar, which is a Cuban uh, kind of Puerto Rican restaurant over on the east side of Cleveland in uh, Eaton, which okay. is an outdoor mall. Mm-hmm. And we started to eat the guacamole. And I wasn't really a big guacamole guy. I just sort of, meh, you yeah, know, yeah, give right. it a taste. And Dan, I said, this is good, but I can do better. Wow. Okay. So being the wrestler I am, went home, started to mix it up. I did. And so I started to eat it yeah. and then have it at parties. Wow. And so what, what would happen was, are you bringing your guac? <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. Are you bringing your guac? So hey, the bell goes off. Yeah, yeah. Now's the time. And when it really, my brother goes, I don't even care if you come, just bring your guac. Just have your wife bring <laughs> your guac. Yeah, I don't give a shit about you. Dad. Yeah, exactly right. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. And, and, and then I would have people around, surround the bowl, uh-huh. finishing the bowl oh, or right, finishing right. it with a spoon. Get your camera out. Yeah, right. So, yeah. And so- Bing, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thick, but not that thick. Yeah. So light bulb went out and I said, I got something here. Wow, that's fantastic. So, yeah, so I started going to foodies like Brandon Kurstowski and some other guys, mm-hmm. and they all said, you got you got a game changer here. And so we put together the A-team, mm-hmm. and we uh, have a uh, have a proof of concept order ready to fill in August for nice. 606 stores, and we're going down to Mexico, and we're going we're gonna to start 
cranking it out, man. Yeah, wow. cranking it out. We got four different guacs. We got a breakfast brunch spread. We've got a um, um, we've got a chip dip, and we have a uh, condiment slash marinade slash salad dressing. Wow, yeah, that's yeah. cool. So, how can uh, potential? Uh, do you are you looking for potential investors, or is that something that's yeah? On the oh table yeah, right we now? we so. we definitely want to be oversubscribed. Okay, you know, the more okay. money, the merrier. And yeah, yeah. the reason is, is because you know we have to we get we have to get distribution. Right. Okay. And we think we do, but it's going to be, you know, it's a sleepy category right now with mediocre product out there. Yeah. And we think we got a game changer, but yeah. it's not, you know, it doesn't, you know, they can rip us off. Right. Oh, you sure. know what I mean? They can sure. re engineer the, you know, so there's a lot of money people out there. But again, what I found about the thing with cough pops and some of the food is, is just, it's just, I'm a grinder. Yeah. I just won't be outworked, you know? I mean, and so That's I think awesome. that, yeah, I think that, the, the the thing about this is is that that's are going to be our special sauce besides the recipe is that we're just not going to stop right you know? right so well that's yeah, how you yeah. get ahead man yep and the whole thing yep so um you told me an interesting thing about how much of this you're going to make <laughs> yeah what's the first match was it like a ten thousand pounds my brother oh, man. yeah how, how you do how do you go about doing that? You talk to like a, a big mixer, <laughs> <laughs> a big bowl, a lot of avocados, my man, oh, a my. lot of avocados. So, so what happens is what you, what you do is a test batch yeah. and then you can extrapolate that out. Okay. okay. So it could be yeah. a test batch of maybe, you know, hundred pounds or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you'll extrapolate, extrapolate it out. And, and you won't you make the... all 10,000 pounds at one time. Okay. Okay. You may make it over a course yeah, yeah. of a week or something like uh, that. So, and then you have like the ingredients and you're all set and you just multiply that by the amount of. Yeah. We're going to the test. We're going down to their executive te test okay. kitchen and we're going to knock it out. Nice. We're going to knock it out. Yeah. So how can people find you uh, and investors, potential investors? Where, where they yeah, go? just hit me up at palladiumedge.com mm -hmm. or peter at palladiumedge.com or my mobile phone is 216-287-1522. That's 216-287-1522. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Well, great, Peter. Yeah. Um, one last uh, question for you. Yeah. Uh, any advice to anyone that's just getting into business? What's the one big piece of advice you want to give them? If you think you've seen it all, you haven't. Really? Prepare for the unexpected. Okay. And people say, well, how can you do that? Just know that there's going to be stuff that's going to hit you out of left field and you're not going to, and you're going, oh, okay. I right. got to figure this out. Figuring it out is mm -hmm. the greatest thing an entrepreneur can have. Figuring, Figuring it, it out. out. Yep. And get back up. Oh yeah. Well, Gotta Rocky said, up. right. You know, Salone said, it's not how hard you get hit. It's how hard you, how, how fast you can get it back up and keep moving forward. That's right. Now, granted, it's a fic fictional character, but it's so true. You got to keep moving. And sometimes you got to move left or right, you know, or duck under yeah. or jump over. Yeah. But you got to keep moving forward. No matter what. Yep. No matter That's what. Key. Good advice. Good Thanks, advice. bro. Appreciate it. Well, hey, it's great having you on here. And uh, we yeah. look forward to hearing from you and your successes in the future. Yep. And we'll go from there. And I love, I would love to get your take on the taste and what you think. I will. All we right, will brother. do that for All sure. Right. I love it. I love All it. Right. Well, Dan, thank you so much for having me. Appreciate you. My pleasure. Love Great. Man. Well, that was another episode of Final Cuts. And we look forward to seeing you next week. How oh, impressive, dude. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I know this is kind of healthy for you, right? Extremely healthy. I hope you guys The tops, the green tops of scallions, cilantro, mm -hmm. lime juice. I bet that and one of the A4. They're a little bit like something onion in there. Visit bvsfilmproductions.com or email info at bvsfilmproductions.com to find out more. Let's face it, everybody loves to make podcasts and vodcasts, but nobody wants to edit them. Well, except for us. At Premier Podcast Productions, we professionally edit and distribute podcasts and vodcasts for companies around the world. Our process is simple and affordable, allowing you to stay focused on what you do best, developing great content, and building your subscriber base. From recording and editing to final distribution and marketing, we can help every step of the way to make your podcast stand out and get the results it deserves. Contact us today at premierpodcastpros.com to take your podcast to the next level.